a look at our criminal and other procedure offenses act at 30 provides punishment for corruption but if you go to the criminal offenses itself act 29 which creates corruption basically it has devoted not less than 16 of 16 subheadings to the offense but one thing about it is that if you look at it, it it has been described as a misdemeanor at times we give a wrong meaning to misdemeanor the impression that has been created that whenever we talk about the word misdemeanor what we are saying is that sentence that may be imposed should not exceed three years but that is not wholly true it is not wholly true an offense could be a misdemeanor but the lawmaker will provide a sentence up to 25 years as we have in ghana some of them so let's have a look at our definition first how we have defined corruption in our law when we look at it it is limited to jurors and those holding public office so if you are not one of them then you are out of the net of corruption. Our definition itself is insufficient and needs to be defined. If we look at the United Nations Convention Against Corruption and African Union Convention on Prevention and Combating Corruption, they have included corruption from various angles, including private transactions. Why is it that if a public officer takes money illegally, it is an offense, but if it is taken by a private person in the same manner, it is not an offense? I believe there is the need to have a second look at it. We have to redefine our definition for corruption and widen it to encompass private and other matters which are captured by the EU and the UN, Conven UN Convention I mentioned a moment ago. If we look at our laws on corruption, basically all of them are meant to be misdemeanor. But few of them, few of them have been, even though they are misdemeanors, they have been prescribed with a sentence, maximum sentence, up to 25 years. This includes section 239, that is corruption in, of, and by public office, office or, or juror. 252, accepting or giving bribe to influence public officer or juror. 253, corrupt promise by judicial officer. 260, withholding of public money by public officer. Apart from these few ones, all of them remain misdemeanor and the maximum sentence that a court can impose is three years. But regarding the sections 239, 252, 253, 260, I've just mentioned, the section 2965 of Act 30 permits the court to impose sentence up to 25 years. Now, the another school of thought is that why do you call an offense misdemeanor even the name itself does not make it attractive but you give a sentence of 25 years why don't you call it a felony to deter people the name alone may deter people so people are agitating that there should be a new definition or a new name for criminal offenses regarding corruption and instead of making them misdemeanors, we should make them felony. Very well, they can be made second degree felony. If they are made second degree felony, then I would wish that we maintain the provisions in section 2965 of Act 30. Because that provision provides that even though they are misdemeanor, if you commit those five offenses, the maximum sentence is 25. Whereas when we talk about second degree felony, the maximum sentence is 10 years unless the lawmaker prescribes otherwise.
I will also state that there is also the need to have a look at section 35 of the course acts. Section 35 of the course acts permits the court to order for restitution or compensation. That is where a person commits offenses which causes um, either harm, injustice, or whatever to the state, including corruption. And the person informs the court that I would like to pay, I would like to refund the amount and pay compensation. And it is acceptable to the prosecution. The prosecution may confer. If it is acceptable, the prosecution may communicate to the judge. And the judge may order that if the judge is agreeable to the proposal, the judge may make an order that the money be paid together with either compensation or interest, as the case may be. So I think if we want to make the offense of corruption a deterrent one, then there is the need to have a look at Section 35 of Act 459, the Course Act, which permits the accused person to make an offer to repay the amount and pay compensation in lieu of sentence. So there is a need to have a look at it. Then, in addition to that provision alone, Section 35 alone, to me, is a discriminatory provision, and we should have a second look at it. The law says that where the matter is before a regional tribunal and a high court, that is where that opportunity is offered to the accused person. But where the person is, tri is being tried before any other court, then the person hasn't got that right to make that plea to the court to allow him to pay the amount and compensation or restitution, as the case may be. Why is it that that offer is limited to only high court and regional tribunal, but the jurisdictions of the district court and circuit courts have been ousted? If we want to, to ensure that justice is meted out, then we should not have discriminatory justice depending on the forum where a person is tried. So I believe there is the need to have a second look at section 35 of the course act. Now, there is the need to have a look at some of our laws, particularly section 298 of Act 30. Somebody may commit offense of corruption and may be convicted. If the person is convicted and the person is sentenced to two years, then the person goes home with his pension and everything. But where, the, where, the, where that person is sentenced to three years, then that person loses everything. Why do we use the term of sentence as a criteria? That if you are sentenced, of, if you are sentenced to three years or more, in offenses involving corruption and other practices, and you hold a public office, then you lose everything. But if you were given less than three years, then you go with your retirement package. I think it is unfair. Every corruption is corruption. If you want to deal with it, whether you are sentenced to a day's imprisonment, a year's imprisonment, three years' imprisonment, and you are to lose everything, then you must lose everything. Because if somebody stole a public officer, took bribe in the sum of 10,000 and he was sentenced to two years and someone stole 5,000 and he was sentenced to three years and the one who was sentenced to three years is going to lose all his entitlements but the one who took greater sum but was sentenced to two years is going home with his benefits. Is this fair? So I will conclude by saying that if you want to use law as an instrument of change, as a tool for development, then there is the need to redefine our laws on corruption and other criminal offenses. And we should avoid using sentencing and, and forum to discriminate against accused persons. Mm -hmm.